Okay, so welcome to Trash Tuesday. Today's guest is my idol, my <laughs> superstar, my everything, Natasha Legero. Esther, I feel like you act like that about everybody. I, you are special. Specifically, <laughs> we've actually talked about you several times on here, and I think she strives to be you every day. You are the queen of short brunettes. Like, you're the one. <laughs> And I have a. This is too stupid. I'm the. <laughs> <laughs> That's sort of what Dave tells me. He's like, <laughs> hey, Dave. No, no, no. But Dave will be like, you're too obsessed with Natasha. Like, you need to view her as your peer. This is weird. And I will right now formally come forward. I have a framed photo of us in my office from when you were on Alone Together. Oh, that's, that's cute. Because it was like a huge moment for me. That but is so sweet. See, I never know when to t take people seriously. Like, I do remember, though, when the first time I saw you, like, in public, like, walking the reservoir, I think you might have bowed at me. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what's her problem? Or you were like... <laughs> she does go fully. You were like, hi, hi. Oh, shit, well, also, I have I know that you kind of have this issue because I've seen Sarah Silverman like uh, bow at me too. She dotes on you. No, she does. Yeah, <laughs> Esther, it. this is in your head. OK, well, I'll be normal for moving forward for the rest of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I have noticed with like like the very young comedians that are coming up. A lot of people are like, oh, my God, Queen, I'm obsessed with you. But then I like notice they say that to everybody. That That is that's a like little, a thing. right? Yeah, that's a thing. Right? Is it? Yeah, it's like, oh, you're on fire, queen, oh, babe, right, right. vibes. I love you so much, Stan. And then you see him like say it to everybody. Yeah, that's like support, you know. Is that is that bad? Um, it's a it's an approach. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't think it's bad. I don't think anything's bad. You know, I'm trying to I'm trying to think like when I was really. I'm trying to think like how I treated people who I was obsessed with or who I looked up to, like. You know, Sarah Silverman or Tig, like what would I do? Um, probably I would just recede into the background more. I don't know. <laughs> I don't I don't remember. <laughs> Life is a blur. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna try to be normal and not annoying. Maybe we should let Kalila talk. Okay. Uh, Wait, Kalila, so we, you still have your podcast with Bobby. I do. Okay. What other questions do you have for me? <laughs> but you guys aren't going out anymore. We're not, no. Okay. We're not. Going we can't out? be together. Or were you married? I don't know. No, we weren't. You can't there be was together. One point, there was one point where he um, did kind of this reverse proposal thing where before he left for a big trip sometime during the pandemic, he was like, hey, you should plan a wedding. And I'm like, excuse me? You should plan a wedding? <laughs> yeah. With no proposal, no No ring. proposal. I was like, what does that mean? He's like, yeah, we should just, you know, do it. And I remember crying. And You're like, he asked me. No, the opposite. <laughs> no, I <laughs> <laughs> And um, yeah, and that, that was as close as we got to um, a proposal. He's married to the stage. He is married to the Ugh. stage. And Bobby is, you know... He 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 was the first person, I'm sure uh, many people have this story, but he was definitely the first person to ever go out on a limb and help me. Same. That he is. You that, too? Yeah. Yeah. And in a very... And that's a very... That's a... I mean, that's a pretty special quality because I feel like a lot of people... Um, you know, just in asking people to do their podcasts, you know, because I have my book coming out and people... A lot of people... You know, I think f women are more competitive and having someone like Bobby who is just always trying to help, even if it's for weird reasons, which I don't think it is. I mean, it's just like how he <laughs> breathes, you know, he's like needs to be like helping and doing. Well, when he sees something special in someone, he cannot let go of it and he really hypes them up. So I think he's a really good hype man in that way. Um, so if you've ever been someone that Bobby has either brought on the road or has talked nicely about. I think it really it's not one of those I stand you queen. He's really it's really No, he from got me an agent. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's got he's like most agent people queen. Agents. <laughs> <laughs> he's like I can't think of one person who I he's gotten everyone agents. Commercial agents. Has he gotten you an agent that's no. <laughs> But he took you out to um um meals a lot. He took me out to Applebee's once. 
How special. We definitely have had shared a Bloomin' Onion. He would take you to an Applebee's. We've gone to like Thai food, Denny's, all the classic, classy <laughs> joints in Hollywood. The classic male comedian spots. <laughs> yeah. Swingers. Yeah. Well, we, I'm sorry to hear that you broke up. I know he you. was very in love with you. You seemed like a great couple, but you also seemed almost like his nurse. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like I, his fantasy nurse. <laughs> This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally li licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus, it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. And if things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It could not be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash trash Tuesday. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash trash Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> Hi, guys. I am back on the road and I'm coming to Seattle, Portland, uh, San Francisco, and... Phoenix, get tickets at estheronice.com and I have a solo podcast. It's called My Pleasure and you can listen to it wherever podcasts are available. I am on the road. I'm bringing uh, Jesse Jetski, Juicy Johnson with me to San Jose next weekend on the 11th and 12th with Josh Potter. Maybe that's two weekends from now. I don't know math or calendars. It's going to be so fun. Please come out to that one. 17th and 18th, I will be in Plano, Texas. Then um, we just added some more dates. I'm going to be in Las Vegas. I'm going to be in Michigan. I'm going to be in a bunch of places. Go to AnnieLetterman.com slash shows. I cannot wait to meet you. Guess what, slugs? We're coming back for another wilder and crazier and way better live stream. Yeah, baby, we're coming back live! I'm scared. We should have a doctor on site. Honestly, are we even allowed to talk about this? I feel like we you've heard enough and secret time and you see it. When you believe it, you see it. It's going to be amazing. So fun. We are going to be very interactive with you guys on the live stream chat. And it's all going down November 17th at 7 p.m. Pacific time. Again, you can get your tickets at moment.co slash trash Tuesday. Get tickets at moment.co slash trash Tuesday. We just took a trip to the Philippines because we were working on this project still. We're very still tempted. You took a trip to the Philippines with your <laughs> ex-boyfriend? We did, but it was planned. It was pre-planned before the breakup. Can I interject that fantasy nurse <laughs> is like a real thing? Because I have this plan in the back of my head that if I'm ever in a room with like scary old Republican men, that I'll just be like, I'm a nurse and then they won't hurt me. <laughs> Why would you say you're a nurse? <laughs> because that's like a way that a woman who they're not attracted to can still be useful in society to them. <laughs> Wait, is this like at the end of the world when they're just like cutting heads or something? Like any of that. Or just like I wandered into the wrong golf club and I'm nervous. <laughs> That, so that's why I'm learning nurse words from you <laughs> through our- What, what makes you think you're going to end up in a room with a bunch of old Republicans? I think just like the way the world is going and like after going- It's on inevitable. The, yeah. And after going on the road with Mark Maron, he like scares me about what the world, what's happening. You went on the road with Mark Maron? Yeah. How was that? Like what I just said. Like I feel like he's always like the like right before you go on stage, he's like telling you. <laughs> he's something. like, we're running out of water in this country. <laughs> like he just like scares me. Did so you much. see they're they're like posting pictures of Kim Kardashian? Like they found the people who are using the most water in L.A. Yes. and it's Madonna, Kim Kardashian, <laughs> and there was one other person. I think uh, it, Sylvester Stallone. Sylvester Stallone, <laughs> <laughs> and they're using so much water for their lawns, and actually. I've got a I've got a nice lawn and now it's gray because you can only water now twice twice a week. But you I guess they're to. doing something that's like they're putting some kind of thing in their in in their timer to like block it. And is it a particular type of like highly water consuming grass? Because why doesn't everyone just have St. Augustine grass? It's hardy and it lasts all year. Is that true? Yeah, I, I wonder think so. if I have that. It like, doesn't look as good. I love, well, I think it might be more. It's like long, right? No, it's thick. It's <laughs> it's just the <laughs> thick. It has good um, <laughs> vein, long perpendicular veins on it. Trash Tuesday, we talk about grass. The <laughs> fact that you guys can go that deep that you just went <laughs> on different kinds of Oh, grass. yeah. It's a little thick. Yeah, Augustine. Yeah. Oh, it is oh not but you're saying it's drought tolerant? I think so. 
I mean, Nurse also, Esther, what do you think? I think that it's not as chic as normal grass. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's and when people think their lawns have died when they've had um, St. Augustine grass on there, they actually are not dead. You just need to rewater it. It's not. Um, it's not a loss. You just rewater it and it'll come back alive. But the 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 point is we are running out of water. Um, I, I also have, have been trying to compost. And now my whole porch, I've been standing outside because I bought one of those composters that you t that you turn. And I've been like sitting out on my porch and I'm like, for like two weeks, I'm like, what is that? It's like roasting garbage smell. <laughs> oh. And then I realized it's the sun beating down on the composter and like the whole, and I'm not putting anything like meat or cheese in it. This is just like vegetable scraps. Mm. Cause then I was going to reuse it and put it in the grass and the, in the plants and it fucking stinks. So I'm actually, I think I'm going to sell it. <laughs> Cause Did it you? was $600. This is what pisses me off. It's like, we're prioritizing Kim's lawn and Kylie's private jet flying so that you have to like smell garbage in your yard. Like, why am I drinking out of a paper straw but kylie can like fly to calabasas have you seen it's have you so seen unfair. those flight trackers wait she flies from cal from la to from hollywood to calabasas yes. she Stop does it. like these like famously short flights and i'm just no. like we, none of us should try like this is fucked up i know but the real truth is it's the corporations agree i mean i think that like us like not turning on our fireplaces or our hot tubs you know i i mean negligible. yeah I can't really speak about this because I don't have the actual data. <laughs> I feel like I know. Same. <laughs> yeah, same. But wait, Kalila, back to this, like, because I do agree with Natasha and it is weird and we all kind of want to know, like, you're traveling with your ex, you're sort of living with him. He's got to still be in love with you. I mean, is you're like one not? of the hottest people I've ever seen in my life, Kalila. He's not. I'm and I've met all of Bobby's ex-girlfriends. <laughs> Who I'm actually friends with, but you're we, hotter than all of them. <laughs> Sorry, I don't sense. remember their names. Don't make, don't make this a clip. <laughs> <laughs> I've um, I honestly think he is having so much fun being single. Oh my god! <laughs> and I look at him with so much like, wait, like I feel so left behind because he's just doing it at such a rate that I can't. Like even when we were on the plane together in first class, I mean, he was. He got, he paid $32 for the highest speed Wi-Fi on the plane <laughs> just so he could just crush it on hinge. In front of you, because yeah. he's trying to show you. I mean, Kalila, surely you're not fooled by this. I think he's, he's like literally doing it in front of her to try to make her jealous to one day win you back Wait, because he's going to need a nurse one day. Can I tell you something <laughs> about Bobby that I didn't intend to share but i know he doesn't watch our podcast so i think it's okay he called me last week and because he, he's uh i were doing an indie movie and he's gonna right. be in it and there was a moment where like the schedule maybe wasn't gonna work but he called me and he's like i'm in i'm gonna be able to do it and he's like do you think i'll ever get another girl oh he asks me that this uh, actually no quite the opposite he asked me if i knew a way for him to get pussy in the Philippines. He did say it that way as well. <laughs> <laughs> and he also said, am I, he was, he, he goes, am I ugly? And I'm just no, like. No, he's so cute and he's very stylish. And so one thing I always remember stylish. about Bobby is he has the best taste in music. Mm -hmm. He always has great taste cool in music. He's a cool guy. No cool. offense. Like I'm. Super cool. And he's wild. very funny. <laughs> Honestly, I'm sorry, but do you think you could do better? I'm not sure. I think about this all the time. Cause he's cool. And Stop cute, it. and funny, and helpful, and he's got a great he's laugh. Natasha, and he's what are you doing right now? I there's Bobby um, th that is in front of the camera yeah. and on stage, and then there's Bobby who's actual shitty asshole. I have to wipe. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, you actually wipe his ass? I mean, basically. <laughs> Will you date me? <laughs> I'll do anything. <laughs> For that opportunity. We No, I hear you. But I mean, you could also be like, hey, here are the rules. This is what I'll accept. This is what I won't accept and right. see if he'll comply. Because I think like we guys like that, that I, I bet. We I mean, guys that. like that who've been bachelors for like 37 right. years or whatever. It's like it's it's a you know, it's hard for them. Yeah. And also like we got together 10 years ago in my 20s. 
and I'm just not that person anymore. Mm. And I think maybe I was so willing to just like give my all and, you know, make him my entire identity. And I just, I don't know. It's hard though, because, you know, I, well, you've been in a relationship for 10 years, yeah. right? I've been in a relationship for 10 years. I don't feel like I'm the person that I I was when I met my husband, you right. know? And I think that you're always changing and always growing. So you really do have to find someone who is capable and open enough to grow with you. And Right. And did you always feel like he was still trying to get to know you as you were changing? Well, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Break up. I mean, I, <laughs> <laughs> well, I do think that there is, you know, it's you always have to kind of fight against stuff sometimes. You know, there's yeah. a lot of like, hey, you should be like this. Or remember, you're like this. And it's like, hey, you know, I had a baby and I don't want to do that anymore. And now I want to do this. Or maybe I don't know what I want to do. And maybe I want to like not do anything. Or I don't know. You know, it's so it's like it, people have to. And you have to reciprocate that too. Right. You know? Right. You So you're also in a, well, you're married to a comedian. You also a comedian. Like, is there, is that chaos? Because I, as a comedian, could not imagine cohabitating with a comedian. But comedians, but, there's a Moshe comedian and then there's Bob <laughs> comedian. <laughs> and also Dave's a comedian. Yeah, he's like a, yeah, that's true. He's but he's very world. sane. He doesn't have yeah. that desire to be on stage at all costs. At all costs. That's well, do you so know, bad. like, <gasps> yeah, it's it's a thing, you know. And, um, you know, Moshe definitely has a serious streak, which I don't think Bobby has. I mean, I've seen Bobby like he has like real strong emotion for his family. Right. I've seen that. But like, I think that, you know, Moshe's got like, you know, he really wanted a family and he really wanted like a Jewish family and he really, you know what I mean? Like uh, that that part of him was strong. Right. So that's why I deemed him worthy to unfreeze <laughs> one of my eggs or, or, you know, make an embryo. Do you? So you went straight with the embryo. You did. No, I froze my eggs. Oh, okay. You froze your eggs first. When I was 38. Ooh, I'm right on time then. Yes. Are you 38? I'm going to be 38. And oh, I'm but that was late. So you should do I it. I know, I know. Okay. But you look like you have a lot of eggs. You just she, <laughs> she's had to have we don't several know abortions. This. <laughs> she has problems. We don't know this. What if they've all ran out? And what if those abortions were never come? Were never going to go full term anyways? You never know. I think here's my fertility expertise as someone who's had one miscarriage. <laughs> If you can get pregnant, that's a good sign, right? They mm -hmm. always say that. And then also I watched this whole thing on Vice about how like egg freezing is like a little bit of a scam because if you are able, it doesn't just end at 35. It's like there's a reason at 38 you are able to get stuff because you kind of still got it going on until like 40, I think. I no, no, it's everyone's individual. In fact, <laughs> in my book that's coming out called The World Deserves My Children. <laughs> ah, title. <laughs> there is a chapter called Freeze Your Eggs and I speak all about my journey and what you can do and how, it, you know, how I did it and things have only gotten better. I mean, I kind of did it at the beginning of the technology, not the beginning of it because it started kind of in the 70s, I think. I don't know, but... um. But now that it's like more, uh, you know, everyone's able to do this if they want. I didn't understand at the time because the doctor was like, you you have 10 eggs. And I was like, well, I don't want 10 babies. So let's, <laughs> that's fine. That's He's like, do you want to do another round? And another round was another like eight to $10,000. And I was like, no, no, I, I don't even want one. This is just in case. Did you have the option for dual stem? Huh? So <laughs> is like you freeze your eggs both in like the luteal phase. So basically in one cycle, you're able to extract two sets. Of oh, eggs. I didn't even they didn't have that then when yeah. I did it. I'm and so that. basically I didn't realize then that those eggs, they sat on ice. And then when I met Moshe, I was like when we finally got married and then I tried to get pregnant naturally, it didn't work. And then finally I was like, okay, let's go to these eggs. Cause the doctors kept talking me into not using the eggs, which I didn't understand at the time. I think they just wanted more money. So mm -hmm. then they kept saying like, why don't, those are like your savings account. Why don't you try to get pregnant by like doing all these shots? So I was like doing all these shots and then try, I had his like jizz on ice when he would be away and like a, <laughs> at the funny bone. And then, cause you can only get pregnant for those two days a month, he you know? He should those gigs. That I know. Not fair. So then I would go into the doctor's office and every time you do one of those, it's called an IUI. Yeah. It's like $700 and they shoot it into you. 
and try to like, you know, get you pregnant naturally. So anyway, two turkey years basing, of that. basically. It's not even naturally. It's like what? A tur- turkey basing. Yeah, exactly. So that didn't work. And so then the eggs, I didn't understand that I had 10 eggs, but then they unfroze them and then there was like eight. And then they made embryos and then there was like four. And then out of the embryos, they tested them for like, men, you know, all, all yeah. the m- mental uh, problems that and, could have. Yeah. and Mosaicism. Make sure it's like they're healthy and then they grade them. And so then there was two embryos out of all of my eggs and they were both grade C. Oh. And the doctor was like, there's, you know, a 30% chance one of these could be a baby. Right. And so then we put one up and I was like pregnant for a month and then it died. <gasps> and then I had one left. And that's my beautiful baby. Oh, oh my So God. I was very, 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 very lucky that yeah. one of those turned into a darling grade A child. I mean, it was a C, but yeah. like it's still, she was very healthy. And I, I don't really know why they give them those those grades. Well, I, so I'm going through, my best friend is going through IVF right now. And um, basically now they're able, when you get the embryos, they're able to even, you know how they give you like, oh, this one's abnormal, but this one's a mosaic. And this one is normal, but it's grade C between A, A is. This one will be a TikTok influencer. Right. This one could maybe (laughs) be a mathematician. (laughs) But even out of those like mosaic embryos, which they used to say like, oh, you shouldn't implant those because, you know, like a certain percentage of those cells are abnormal. Like some women, because they don't have a normal even C option, Mm. they're implanting the mosaic embryo just to kind of roll the dice. Um, Because it is, you know, oftentimes you don't get a normal embryo at all. Well, you have to save your money, try to do two rounds if you can, or if you know how to do two at once, if that's like a new thing they're offering. But you just need to get as many as you can. And then have your uterus, this is what I understand. My doctor kept saying like, your uterus is a 10 out of 10. You've got this amazing, <laughs> like I thought he wanted to fuck my it. uterus. He's always like, <laughs> your uterus, your uterus. But he said women's uteruses are good till they're like, you can be even be 60. Wow. Like that's how, you know, you see these women when they're like pregnant at 50, miracle baby. It's- Hillary Swank. But often, I don't know about her, but often those are donor eggs. So oh, they'll get some yeah. young fertile person and put it in. But your uterus can hold it healthily. And he even told me my my baby, everything was still like I was 38 because the egg wow. was 38 when I was from 38, even though I had my baby at 43. Oh, that is music to my ears. Same. So just, but you really have to do it soon because they'll show you a chart and like literally like in six months, you'll probably have less eggs than you have right now. It goes fast. And when you're young, you have so many that if you just happen to fuck on one of those days that you're like, uh, they call them egg white days. You know what that is? Yeah. <laughs> Stick your fingers up yeah. and it's like like that. It's a pro. There's yeah. two days like that a, yeah. a month, I guess. When you're and, ovulating. And but you're when you're when you're like 19, juicy. it's almost like you can't not get pregnant. When you're juicing, is that what you said? Juicy. <laughs> oh, juicy. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a sticky icky, right? It's yeah. the extra clotty. And it's hard of. because like I know it's gross to talk about it and there's men in the room, but they, no, no, you no. know, that's actually one of the reasons why you know, just like women are embarrassed that it's gross and that people are going to get, you know, grossed out. But it's like, it's really important to know these things. I didn't really understand. Now, what are your thoughts on me doing it alone? Just getting a sperm donor? I have a friend who did that. I mean, that is, I would never do that. But I grew up with, (laughs) I grew up with a single mother who like couldn't handle her three kids because one of them had like, you know, personality problems, not me. Um, (laughs) My problems are different. But like, you know, she was like with three kids alone and I was like the mom. So I, I saw that. That's why I never wanted to have kids. But that was just not, I was, my, my therapist called it a situational breeder, which is like, (laughs) I'll breed if the situation's right. But then there's people, maybe like you, I don't know you that well, but who are like, I'm having a baby no matter what. If I've got to adopt, if I've got to do it on my own, I'm going to have a baby. And like, that's great if you have that energy and you want that heart bad enough. But like, I didn't grow up with a dad. And so for me, I was like, I would only do it if I met someone who was really going to be a partner and really going to help me out. Because also, like, I don't know how to talk to my kid. Like, it's so hard. (laughs) And like, Moshe's just good at it. Like, I don't know what to say half the time. Wait, not to be so awkward and we can cut this, but uh, I know a guy that you know Uh who wants to have a kid on his own. Do I know him? That should be, that's going to be a new thing, I think. Like they're going to be like a service or something to match people who want to co-parent together. Because honestly, here's what sounds good about co-parenting. You get three days a week off. 
That is true. Yes. That would be but so I know nice. when my sister got a divorce, I was like, bitch, this rule. <laughs> <laughs> you have like free, no kids, but obviously people but love their kids and they don't like that. But the legality of it is a little different. Like what if he decides to just up and move to, to Boston? Well, you would have you to can. have a lawyer involved. Yeah. yeah. So and and it like, would be very... I, I don't know. That would be that would be hard. But I don't think you're in any hurry. I think you still have ten more years or eight more years or I don't know. We also the as many pro, years as you want. The pro to the pitch I'm working towards, which is you having a baby with a guy that also wants a baby, is that he's also one of Bobby's best friends. <laughs> <laughs> this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Unfortunately, life does not come with a user manual. We all know that. So when it's not working for you, it's normal to feel stuck. And it's easy to stay on stuck mode and not solutions mode. Yeah, I will say this. Um, better help um, being online and doing everything on there makes me think back on all of these therapists that I was not driving with, I was not doing well with. I remember I had this therapist in college who I could not stand. Do you know how much I would have liked to have been able to like click out of a video? Just go next. Is there someone else? I mean, the fact that like, but it would be too rude. It would have been insane if I did that. That I help think, makes it really easy. Yeah. yeah. Which is such like a, I, I, what, what a nice thing that you don't now have to go back on the computer, look for another therapist under your insurance and go all another, the way over there, pay for gas, expensive gas. And not only that, wait another month before you get into somebody mm -hmm. else's office. I really wish that better help had been around in my 20s but that's okay i just want to say like if you are someone young and struggling and you haven't tried therapy yet this is definitely the best easiest option out there and i highly recommend it and therapy changed my life it changed the course of my life all of our lives actually are going to therapy yeah <laughs> <laughs> and we're going through i think this like in the last couple of years like everyone is going through just drastic change yeah it's insane scene. things are crazy and like Esther said, like therapists are kind of, they're there to help you sort of just identify what the real problem mm -hmm. is and to help you unstuck yourself. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus, it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. And if things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash Trash Tuesday. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Trash Tuesday. I have friends who have done it alone. And I think that if you have money to have help, it could be okay. But I don't know. Whenever Moshe's out of town, it's just like really hard. Can like I, you have to do everything What about if I own. have a really um, um, reliable family? Like my mom, I know oh. there's going to be help. Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. Oh, yeah. You should do it. I just feel like it's... I didn't have that. Yeah. My, my, my husband's mom is deaf and kind of has like bad, she can't really walk that well. And she gave our kids slim fast when I had her. <laughs> <laughs> my dad took my child, you know, oh, you know where we like where we are kind of, there's that bridge yeah. going yeah. against traffic. Yeah, He took her in the stroller to play lotto. <laughs> and he faced I FaceTimed him I was at work and I'm like where are you there was like rear, rear, rear. <laughs> my kid was like six month, months old and my dad's like addicted to the lottery he he just passed but he spent 60 to 100 dollars a day on the lottery mm -hmm. so he's like very addicted to gambling so he had to go do this so he, he took my fucking child <laughs> to the fucking 7-Eleven. I, I haven't even walked that. I walked that bridge once when I got here and I was like, oh, this is unsafe. So anyway, if you have like helpful parents or, you know, then I think that could make a huge difference. I didn't really have that. Can I interject? I also have a dad addicted to gambling who was recently apprehended at a casino because he legally banned himself from it and then still went and tried to play and then they had to arrest him because they could lose their license if someone... This is your dad? Yeah. And where does dad. he play? He plays at um out in Illinois. Well, he, so he wasn't he there's like some casinos in Illinois. He couldn't go to those, so he was driving to Wisconsin at like one of those. What does he play? Uh Blackjack? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, all my oh, my oh, fam all the Italian side of my family is addicted. My grandparents lost the deed to their my nana and papa lost the deed to their house in Vegas. Wow. And her wedding ring. Wow. wow. So it's like they they just play with whatever is left, I guess. Right. Whoa. Yeah, it's kind of sad. 
Wait, I have a question. Yes. Let's do me now. <laughs> <laughs> I really love my life. Like I love weed. I love eating, writing, reading. I almost had a baby. I got I wanted to. I got pregnant, lost it. And now I feel like I'm not really sure if I want to. Like I genuinely don't know. And I I do look at you as sort of a role model that like because oh my gosh like look at Natasha she's lived such a full life she had her baby later and now it seems like you're pulling it off doing both like what's your advice like should I or shouldn't I well I mean (laughs) no pressure I think that it's a personal situation you know it's like how how do you do you really want to have a baby with Dave and do you guys think you could raise it together I do think we could (laughs) and I think with Carlos but but I'll tell you what your life becomes like really different you know like your life is like it's almost like it's no longer your life you know like you don't wake up and be like oh maybe I'll journal or maybe I'll meditate or maybe I'll but have a cup of coffee and play some music or practice piano or oh what about that book I wanted to read it's like your whole life from the second you wake up you're like smoothie here's your clothes where's your sunscreen let me brush your hair now let me brush your hair Cheerios I don't want that here's the you know and then like getting them in the car like every single thing is like that and I'm sure but then you get like you know now my kid's in preschool so she's gone until one so at least there's like that time that I I can do stuff, but there's so much to do with like cleaning and, but at the same time, like, I just think she's so special and I could never imagine my life without her. And like, I love her so much and she brings me so much joy. And I feel like I like live with this like magical creature that's just like, you know, the best thing in the world. But it's like my life as I used to know it is gone. And sometimes I can kind of like get glimpses of it back. Like I'll be like, I'm going to Palm Springs for two days. Like I have to, and I'll like leave or something. Um, So, I mean, that's a really personal question. Like, how are you adjusting to that? Are you pro? Like, are you, do you really often long for what you had before? Cause I do feel like you, especially since you had her so late, like you really became like a grown up. Well, that's what my book's about is like having a child Having a child (laughs) when your life is like, you know, you're in your prime because like I've because my mom had her kids when she was 23. Like she like had dropped out of college and then just got pregnant and just kept getting pregnant, you know. And I think a lot of our parents kind of had a similar situation in the 80s. Like, you know, I think that, you know, women were just kind of still getting pregnant and then they all got divorced in the, (laughs) you know, and I, I. do I so my life was very full yes that's true but now um I don't know it's full in a different way yeah that's a good way to put it okay but it, it's kind of cool that you don't just have one like same season of your life that's a good point like yeah. I like looking at my life as having you know just chapters right yeah and if I'm like now I'm more inclined to have children and to kind of have that for myself only because I I I feel like I can do it and I can do it alone even. Like I feel so much more confident about it now. I wasn't before. I was like, oh. I feel like you could do it alone. That's yeah. another thing. Like I don't think I could. Like I think I would just like be too flustered or something or, or be too negative towards the kid because I just get stressed really easily. Mm. But I think that if you feel like you could have a handle on it and you have like family help, then yes. But yeah. I just think that people – Like both of you should be having children. Moshe always tells me you need to stop telling everyone to have kids (laughs) because I really do believe it like changes your life for the better. Like, but then it's like, it makes you less ambitious. Like I don't want to go um, to Vancouver for six months and work on something. Okay, well, same. Or like (laughs) Atlanta or wherever, like, you know, and you know, I I can't, I just don't do stuff then because I, and I don't want to tour and I don't want to be away from her and, you know, that actually sounds good. Like I would love something in my life that I love so much that it makes me not want to do things that aren't important anymore. Like that does sound like a good thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm it on is. board. Okay. I think you guys should both have kids. Okay. But you could also wait a little bit, Esther. Yeah, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna take my time and make this indie. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then check for your check for your egg white days and you know, get get to plowing. What? Wait, how 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 does one go through the process of um choosing a sperm donor? Like what are, what do you think are some characteristics that I should prioritize if I'm looking at a page of a sperm donor? Personally, owner? I would get a stranger. Yeah. Because I, would, I don't want to have to share. I wouldn't want to have to share because it's not just responsibilities. You're sharing like, um, you know, power or control, mm. you know, like what if you want them to go to this kind of school and he wants them to be religious or I don't know. You know what I mean? It's like you have so much more control, but I would look for um, education. Mm -hmm. That's what I would look for. IQ. I have a Sorry. very specific answer that I've been planning since I was in high school, <laughs> which is I would personally like to do what Madonna did for her first baby, where she mated with a tall Cuban personal trainer. And then she made like a little mini Cuban version of herself, mm -hmm. Lola. Uh, gorgeous, right? So cool, gorgeous, perfect. Like that's what I would do. But you would I, go for a physical specimen. Yeah. That's not a bad idea. It'd be nice to get both. Like I have a girlfriend who was like 46 and she couldn't use her eggs. So she got a girl who looked very similar to her, mm -hmm. but who went to Harvard for math. <laughs> oh, wow. So the girl like looked like, like <laughs> I think she said, looked kind of like Emma Stone, but also had gone to Harvard. So it's like they had just have this, right. this these genes, you know, so. I think you should just have sex with an athlete and then see what happens. <laughs> Esther. But I, then we would just I, truly, because I, I was an athlete my whole life. So it's like I need. What, too athletic of a kid? What? Possibly, because then they could just like rely on their athleticism their whole oh, life. Oh, I know. What if you like procreated with like kind of someone shorter than you, like maybe Asian comedian? <laughs> <laughs> but like really funny, really generous. Um, Wait, no We joke. thought about it. Is that? <laughs> we really, like, after we broke up, we, we oh were my like, God. No, I, I, I'm the world's <laughs> stupidest breakup. <laughs> I'm on this. I think they still this vacation. is the thing. Should you guys do it? Um, I think that uh, probably not, Esther. <laughs> <laughs> I think not. No, but we did. Well, how about a throuple? The guy who you go to the doctor with and then <laughs> <laughs> his best friend, my best friend. <laughs> but honestly, I do think there's so much work with a child that like it's two people isn't even enough. So it's like if you have a family and also I think in the future, maybe people like when we during the pandemic, we got together with another family who had three kids. So there was like four adults like, you know, taking turns making the dinner and taking turns doing the dishes. And I feel like living like that like would be I mean, that's probably how like people got molested, though. So I don't know. It's just like it's hard because communal. it would be ideal to have like a more communal situation. That is my dream Same. for all of my friends to live in a commune I without know. the fucking each other. Who part. decided that it's just a fa little family? And that's right. it. I don't oh, know. I know this answer. It's what? capitalism. Because it is like I'm learning about this. Dave is always like, you just learned this. Um, but like, it's because that's how everybody makes money off of us. If we like make more little houses and stuff. Stay nuclear. Oh, right. We couldn't all just live in a big house. Right. But it yeah. would be more fun because there's just endless work to do. Right. You know, and... And that's also why it's like kick your kids out at 18 so that like they have to go work and pay bills. It's so it's bullshit. But I don't think kids kids are just going to stay at home now. Right. I think. Right. So. I think it's kind of cute. Yeah. That's what I would do, obviously. But my, my, my daughter says, Mommy, I'm never going to leave you. I'll always be living right here. And I'm like, well, you're probably going to move out, you know, but she's just like. <laughs> <laughs> my child's very loving. I don't know. Maybe my my I just got lucky because I don't mean to urge you to have a baby. Like, what if yours sucks? <laughs> <laughs> my sister always says like you make them like perfect for you. Like it that's like you can fix it. Have you seen Rachel Zoe's Instagram? Uh -uh. She has this like video out of her son proposing, asking her to marry her, and then they kiss on the lips, and then the child is like, "I am so fortunate to be the offspring of this beautiful human," and. <laughs> Like, does she? How does she get them to act like that? I don't know. That's giving Alicia Silverstone. Uh, yeah, that is giving Alicia Silverstone. <laughs> Which one time she was in my Barry's boot camp class, and her son was staring at, through the glass window the whole time, and in between each session of a workout, she would run and kiss him. Stop it! I, I was like, wait, what was the son doing? Just staring at her, working out. Oh, and she was working yeah. out. 
which I shouldn't judge because when I was little and I took ballet, my mom had to stand at the window and I had to see her the whole time. But that's <laughs> different. Um, yeah, no, that's giving Alicia for sure. Wait, I actually have a question to go back to. Yes. Why did you decide at 38 to freeze your eggs? Like what came over you? How did you come to that decision? It was like, I'm just a very, kind of like what you said, Kalila, I was always changing. Like I don't have any tattoos because I know that I'm not going to want I, I'm, I'm gonna like I wanted to get my first boyfriend's name was Bill and I almost got his name tattooed over my um, like right where my c-section scar is now <laughs> like I would have had the like in like graffiti font like Bill <laughs> I'm just saying like I almost did that so like I, I know that I'm always changing and I'm I like a person <laughs> look at this this blackout but that looks cool I like the blackout is an uh, under it is Matt Oh hair. God! These names. <laughs> I know. Yeah. So I mean, I just knew that about myself that I was always changing and always growing, and I knew I'm. I didn't. I, I was like, who knows what I might want? And if this is the time, I might as well do it since I have the extra money. You know, obviously it's a luxury to have eight thousand dollars laying around, and I think it's probably double that now. It is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um. But yeah. So so that's why you just were like, I might one day want this. Yeah. So I'll do it. And I knew that that was, I I was kind of at the cutoff. It's like insurance or something. Right. Um, I think the reason I want to freeze my eggs is so that I don't have to think about it. Yeah. For a while, for a couple of years. It takes the edge off. And then you're not like telling guys like, oh, yeah, I'm I'm 40 and I really want to have kids soon. And, you know, it's it's a real game changer for women because now it gives women this like extra decade to like work on their careers and like make their own money and and find out who they are you know like you think tw- like at 23 i mean i'm sure some 23 year olds know who they are but like when my mom had kids she was just like you know and also birth control i mean that's like a new thing we forget like women in the 60s didn't even have the option of like taking a pill so that they didn't get pregnant you know they would just like if if you fuck your boyfriend and you get pregnant you, what are you going to do you know so Anyway, I think that it's it's just why not, right? Because the world deserves your children, Kalila. Thank you. Yours too, Esther, and Dave's. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting pregnant tomorrow. I'm turkey basting myself with a rando. Do you want? Uh, you probably don't want Dave's. <laughs> You're just offering your <laughs> husband sperm to her every day, every day, Natasha. <laughs> every day. Does Can he want to have? Dave? <laughs> does he want to have a kid? Uh, he's he like, seems like he'd be a very solid father. I mm-hmm. agree. I think he's very much uh, on my level with it where we're we both like look at each other and we're like, we could, we don't have to. Like we're but I I feel like he would be such a good dad that like we should. But yeah, I think that it's this is what I miss about not, you know, when I didn't have a child, I feel like. I was able to follow my bliss a little bit more, you know, my own personal, what am I into? And, you know, I'd love to like, just stay home, like during the pandemic, like, what did you do? I would have loved to like, you know, learn more piano and, and take in more classes. As and someone who doesn't have a child, I didn't do a goddamn thing See, over the really? I wasted it. I, was, I wasted it, was it. I laid at home. You didn't learn the G chord or anything? Nothing. I, I, I have to say, so, sorry, go ahead. I, I journaled for exactly three days and that was it. <laughs> Like, oh, let's try something new. I journaled and that was it. Nothing, nothing. I forgot those entire two years. Yeah. In fact, I felt like I was looking at all the people with kids like, oh, my God, like score. They're so lucky. They have all this time at home where they don't have to worry about like the outside world where they can be with their kid. Because I was so anxious and scared at the beginning of the pandemic that I made oh, I wasn't capable of making good use of my time. Right. I think a lot of us were suffering from that. Like all I would do is just read the news and try to keep up yeah. because no one was telling us what to do. You know, they're like, wear masks, don't wear masks. And it was like, everything was so confusing. You almost had to like read into, read everything yourself to try to figure out how you want yes. to keep yourself safe. You know, lice all the lawn, li- lice all the groceries. Don't do that. That could, you know, who knows? But uh, yeah, I spent most of the pandemic doing laundry. <laughs> but I do feel like people who have had families during the pandemic, well, some people got divorced, but I do feel like for certain people, myself included, it made the family really close. Because we were like eating. I mean, I was planning on outsourcing 60 hours a week to a nanny during the two years of the pandemic. And then all of a sudden I didn't do that. 
and I was just with my child all the time. We had like three meals a day together, like in our dining room, you know, that we cooked. Like that would have never happened. That's and I so like magical. I well, I really think it made us like a really strong family because of that. And I think, I think a pro- I, I've talked to a lot of people who had that experience. So that was lucky. But you know, it took me three years to write my book because I didn't have a nanny. So it's like I didn't really know how I was supposed to do it. Mm-hmm. You know. Oh, are we on banana break already? <laughs> um, I'll take the green It's really crazy Like well it's It's also parenting tactics You know like I was just talking to a friend Who said that She's like yeah Did your mom put hot sauce In your mouth When you did something bad I was like no But I did get like paddled And then With a belt With a with a wood thing um, I know friends who like Would kneel on the floor and On rice That was Rock it. salt for me Rock salt but, but I would never do that to my child ever, <laughs> ever. And I think you might get your kid taken away if you did that now. You know, it's funny. You When you came on Tiger Belly years ago, you were the first person to tell me that you shouldn't beat your kid. <laughs> and I was really? Like, really? Yeah. You were like, Kalila, uh-uh. Like, that's just Were you beaten? Big... I was beaten my whole life. Yeah. Hard. But you were like, yeah, that's But like... not abused. Abused, like, every emotional, all of it. From your parents? Uh-huh. But... Well, you know what? I mean, I just watched the Sinead O'Connor documentary. Have you seen that? Mm -mm. No. Her mother made her live in the garden for two weeks when (laughs) she was eight years old. And like her whole first album is about that. But it's like so beautiful. And I'm like, if her mom wouldn't have done that, (laughs) would we not have like this like, you know, beautiful album of music about you know, maybe, maybe. I hate that that's true about art. <laughs> Marilyn Monroe too. Watch the new Marilyn Monroe right. movie. She was just like it. molested in foster well, care. Wait, uh-huh. To clarify, that movie is based on a novel, so it is fiction, which really pisses me off because I want to know what really happened to Marilyn. I thought she was abused. She I thought was, she was in the foster system for sure. She was, but it's like that movie is all just based on fiction. Like, what the fuck? Give me the real. Didn't the actor like, doesn't she still have like an accent or something? She Anna de Armas, yeah. 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 Um, well, anyway, I'm sorry that you were treated like that. But thank you for telling me you can't beat kids. <laughs> no, I don't think you can even spank them anymore. Right. Is I, what, I think that's exactly what you told me. Like, you can't leave okay. them in the car. Like, <laughs> I was well, left in the in car. Like, I spent most of the 80s, like, in, in a car. hot Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just remember my mom, like, always at the post office, always <laughs> at the grocery store. Do you not, do you remember that? You're, yeah. did, no. did your parents do that too? I was like always. It was across the board accepted. I was either in the car or like so bored out of my mind and like a crate and barrel. Like <laughs> I remember for years, I was like, I'm never going inside a crate and barrel. I'm never going to an antique store. I'm never like, I was just always standing there while my mom was shopping for Wait, something. Maybe they, you've heard of like French parenting. Yeah. Where they take their kids everywhere, no matter how inconvenient. Yeah. That's what they do? Yeah, like European style of parenting is very different where they take them to all the dinners. They don't do like the nanny thing. Hey, listen, I love that. And whatever I'm doing is probably fucked up because like I went to a party and it's not just me, it's everybody I know. I went to this party recently and every parent was just standing over their child while the child was like (laughs) playing in in the play box, you know? And it's just like, that's just what we do now. It's like so hard to not helicopter because look, I'm only having one. I can't have any more. It's like she's so important to me. I don't know what would happen if anything were to ever happen to her. So it's like and I'm just like it's so that's what I talk about in the book a lot is the fear. It's like you have so much fear. Like what could happen, you know, and like every time she she goes in a car with someone else, I'm like fantasizing about someone flipping the car and what will happen. And, you know, what if something happens to her? It, it, and it's like, it's this, you've given birth. That's another thing I was going to say. Like, if you have a baby, it's like, I used to have all this joie de vivre. And, you know, I always wanted to like, I was never afraid of anything. I would go whitewater rafting without a helmet, <laughs> like whatever. <laughs> I was just down for whatever. And now I'm just like, scared and and like giving birth to this love is like giving birth to this fear and it just gets worse and worse i mean you think it's going to be better when she's 12 or sexually active or driving herself you know it's just going to keep so it's like learning how to manage your fear uh, you know that's why it's good to have a partner for me because he can sometimes be like hey you need to stop thinking like that hey she's going to be fine you know hey that's just like fear 
fear, you know, and just someone to keep you grounded and down to earth about it because I'm just like always imagining the worst. I mean, yesterday she was like, mom, I, I choked on some popcorn and couldn't breathe for three minutes. And I'm like, what? Where were you? Where were you? You know, at the synagogue. Okay, well, let's, what, Moshe, what happened? He's like, I was there. It was pretty scary. And then I'm just like, you know, I don't know what to do. Or like the other night she like was stuffing beads up her nose. She was like going to sleep with a handful of beads and then shoving them up her nose. And I had to like get tweezers to take them out. But I'm, I don't know what could happen. You know, it's like they're, they they also are people they're like these people who could hurt themselves at any second you know so you're giving birth to this thing that you can't live without that is like uh, your whole world now revolves around every decision you make is like because of this thing <laughs> and then they can also like hurt themselves so easily right. how do you cope but your parents but our parents i don't know what they were thinking they were just like i'll leave them in the car like, <laughs> whatever do they just like were they not as into us um yeah, I, I can't tell. My mom also had me really young. Mm. Yeah, I think she wanted to kill me. <laughs> I think she wanted me gone. Is this I is love. the mom that you're going to let watch the baby that you're going to have with she has, an athlete? <laughs> when I see her with my nephews and nieces, she is just this tender, like overtly loving person now. And that makes sense. Now. People change. Like they mellow no, out. No, but it, I rage out when I see her do that. <laughs> like I, I literally, I'm like, you can't do that. Like I'm the person who then polices that because I'm like, why are you doing that? I I get so. What you don't want her mad. to be tender? Maybe you shouldn't be a mom. <laughs> well, no, it's because it's like this. She does this. It's almost like she with my niece. She showers her with my niece is twenty now. So much love and affection that she still doesn't show my sister and I. She's still very like physical. Oh my god, my mom does the same thing though, but with like waitresses. We'll be at a <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> my mom has only seen my kid twice, but when I've seen her. We'll be at a restaurant. She's like, oh, what's your name? Julia? <laughs> oh, Julia, you're so cute. I just love you. Where are you from? And just like so into the waitress. And I'm like, hello, I'm yeah. your daughter. You know, All so right. I think that's like a defense mechanism yeah, or something. Yeah, maybe. My mom doesn't give it up for anyone, so I'm good. She just doesn't <laughs> care about me or well, anyone else. You know what's really funny? You guys know Bonnie McFarlane, right? Yeah. Yeah. She told me once that she's like, um, strippers have daddy issues and female comics have mommy issues. <laughs> and I think it's really true because every female comedian I know does seem to have some kind of like weird mom problem. I wonder. I always feel like my like origin story is just that my older sister who was eight years older than me like and way prettier, skinnier, taller, bigger boobs, whatever, like all the guys liked her. She just like would not hang out with me or let me in her room. So I ever like b barely like it was such a rare occurrence. Well, that's probably because she had to take care of you. Yeah. Oh, no, I don't blame her. Are it's you like, guys friends now? Yeah, we're we're so cool now. But like, I just feel like I'm always so desperate for like an older sister to like let me in their room. Like mm -hmm. that's like my whole personality. Like me. Exactly. I see. <laughs> okay, now we see it. It's not about me. It's about you. <laughs> <laughs> it's my problem. But you, I did, you were amazing as a host on that 70s house. On you remember day. that? Yes, I watched that every Tuesday, I think. That's so cute. Isn't that embarrassing? It was a good show. Yeah. <laughs> Natasha was a like funny, sexy 70s host named Dawn on an MTV show. It's the, you know, those shows that like your first show that makes you not have to like be a waitress anymore. Yes. That's what that was. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm sorry you went through that, Carla. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> that's, that's really, that's really harrowing. But maybe that's why you're successful. No, it's I think so I would have been far know. more successful because I look at my friends um, that I grew up with and everyone is just thriving emotionally, it seems. And they seem, I, I was definitely stunted um, most of my late teens and 20s. I didn't, I, I was not a bright teenager. I was very reckless and I, yeah. So um, now I was stunted. I, I don't believe that um, the bad stuff is what made me who I am. I think I would have been a far more... Um, um, actualized human by now if I didn't like suffer what I suffered. It's impossible to know that you're doing the right thing when you're raising a kid. Right. It's so hard. And everyone, you know, all these like mommy blogs, I follow all these people on Instagram. It's like, but how do they know? How do right. they know that that's the right thing to do? Like they're always like, don't say, don't say good job to your kid. You have to say, you have to say you worked really hard on that. Or don't say, <laughs> be careful. 
because then that then they'll always be scared. Like there's just all these things that you naturally do. And they're like, don't help them, you know, put on their shoes if they can do it themselves. It's like, oh, well, I got to go, you know, (laughs) and it's like, and what are they basing this on? I don't really know. I mean, they're probably right. But still, it's like it's not like we have a whole crop of kids who've grown up with all of these doctors telling us what to do and seeing what happened. I mean, we saw what happened when we stopped hitting the kids. We got millennials. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like basically like wait what's so- my well i'm just saying like it's a little different like like my generation we were all spanked and hit right so- and like left in cars and then like don't you think like as a rule aren't millennials just like a little more precious or something i mean not you personally but like i don't know like yeah yeah no totally it's just a different yeah. vibe i'm just saying like we don't really know what works like right in who knows but what is then? Then what is Gen Z a result of? Like, what were the parents of Gen Z like? Is that like Gen X or something? Yeah, I think that are they slightly hardier in some ways. Yeah, but but it just depends on what age you had your kid. Yeah. Oh, that's true. You know what I mean? Because yeah. because my kid is four, but like, you know, I'm older, so right. How do, how is that like? It, it doing school stuff and being around the other moms do you feel like you're the same age old all moms in LA are old oh, okay <laughs> you would be like people would think you were an eighth grader if you went to pick <laughs> up your kid Esther. did you okay so like I always feel like I came up in comedy like when it was still really misogynist and you were before me so it was like probably even worse I have this I don't know if it's like a chip on my shoulder or something I just feel like all these older men when I was younger like ingrained this idea in me that I have an expiration date because I'm a girl and that like once I'm like 30 I would be ugly and have no use in society and I feel like this concept has then like made me swing the other way so hard where I'm just like fuck you guys like because that of that like I'm going to prove that actually like in well into your 30s and, uh, and beyond like I'm going to be able to be accomplish so much and still be useful whatever like did you have that any voice in your head and do you relate to that okay well I remember I was like with this comic and he was describing someone to me and I was like who is that I won't say who it was and he was like you know that girl she's blonde she's just starting to lose her looks Like, that's how he was trying to describe to me who she was. Like, I would know that from, you know, his description. And I think that like, and again, the Sinead O'Connor documentary, I was watching that. This is a little different. But like every single guy uh, interviewer was like, you shaved your head. You shaved your head. What happened to your long hair? You know, and like everyone wants you to have long hair and have big boobs and, you know, be young. And I think that the only answer to any of this, the only, only answer is like more women making content more women writing, more women being in char- in the positions of power to greenlight things about women. And like, we just have to have more women helping each other, producing for each other, interviewing each other, talking about each other, writing parts for each other, acting in each other's things. And it's just like, it just sort of, and, and also inspiring young women, you know, like, I went to an arts school, so I was very lucky. Like, I got into an arts program. But, like, I know out of the public schools out here, it's like the arts are, like, they're pretty much taking them away because they can't afford it. And it's like the arts are so important. And I think that just grooming people, you know, like, for example, I know so many guys who went to NYU film school. I know no women who went to NYU film school in the 90s. Like, you know, I I bet I bet the classes were like two women out of like and like 50 men and like men just have always believed they could be directors and so and producers. And so they do it and they go out there and they just like, you know, flop their dicks around. And I think like the more women (laughs) and I talk about this a little bit in the book because like. You know, I remember hearing Amy Poehler talk about like sticking up for herself in this like some guy was kind of talking down to her at an awards show and she just stopped and was like, don't talk to me like that. And then she got what she wanted. And, you know, and I remember I was on my way to work and I had to stand up to this editor and I had heard her just talk about doing that. And then I stood up to this editor and I was like that morning, I just after I was listening to the audiobook, I was like, you know what? I don't want you talking to me like that. You can get another job. And I had never talked to a man like that. And he was like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was my show, you know, but I was still being treated like shit. And it was because of the modeling that I had heard that she did it. And so I think that like the more we can set an example and just 
we just need more women, more women doing it. And that's really the only answer to that, because then women are like, wait, I want to see women in their 40s and 50s. Like that's some of the like, have you rewatched Sunset Boulevard lately? It's like amazing. And she's like this like. She has a tattoo. One of my tattoos. Her. What? Oh, really? <laughs> my favorite movie. It is. Yeah. But I mean, so look cool. at her. She Gloria Swanson's like in her forties, but she looks like she's in her sixties. You know. But her, what's going on with her is so fascinating, and I think yeah. women are fascinating. And like, I always tell Moshe, like, he'll want to go see these movies, and I'm like, if there are five men on a billboard, I am not watching that movie. It's so <laughs> boring to me. Like, I'm so much more interested in women. Women are. I like what women on stage are more interesting. They're beautiful. They're good to look at. Like they they have such an interesting point of view. They give birth like they just have they deal with men. I mean, there's just like <laughs> so much more to it to me personally. I mean, I don't mean to be sexist like that. But for me personally, I'm just way more interested in a woman's journey. And I just think that modeling that and that's how we'll get more of it. So start production companies, I guess. The three of us right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, don't you? Th- what do you think? What do you think's the answer? I don't know. I mean, that's just... I agree. Like I, I feel the same way, and I feel like I, all I can do is like I, I only have control over myself. So I just like try to stay really motivated and like hear those voices. Like I literally have a relative who I've heard on the phone with my parents be like, "Oh, you know that's nice. Esther's having some success. Like you know she'll hit her thirties. It'll fizzle out." But yeah, and I like that is just always going to be there and i'm just always going to feel like i have to prove that wrong i think and so but it's like that's like it's like saying women aren't funny i mean it's like literally not true just like yeah, go look at right. jane fonda's instagram or you know what i mean like you can just find those people who empower you and like look at what they're doing and i mean why would it end Right. I mean, when a man's 38, he's what, like finally ready for pet ownership? Like, <laughs> but a woman's like completely expired. Again, <laughs> both of you, just so you know, see how young and hot you are. If you go get pregnant right now, just so you know, the doctor is, if it's a man, we'll call it a geriatric pregnancy yeah. because yeah. it's over 34. So it's like, you know, this is the same time a man's ready to like, you know, what, get his own apartment. I, it's like, it's so <laughs> annoying. stock toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> Own a plan. So I think it's just like, I think we just have to be really strong and like not let those things. It's like the same thing with fear and my baby. Like I just have to like, just kind of be bigger than it, you know? And it's obviously hard. And I think it's like requires you to dig a little deeper in yourself a little bit Mm -hmm. and, you know, to, to try to figure out how to not be afraid of every single thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Lexapro has helped me with that. I'll admit, <laughs> five milligram gang. Every day? Yeah. You know, yeah. ketamine really helped me out. It did? I cannot begin to describe the immediate effects did as an high? antidepressant. So I I'm I am I don't do any drugs. I don't smoke weed. I maybe drink like twice a year. Um and um How boring. Really boring, <laughs> really boring, Natasha. Twice Beyond a year, because then you're not even sober. You're like, you like on your birthday. You're right. Like, I'll I'm have like, a cosmopolitan. Oh. Right, right. Super <laughs> boring. I'm super straight edge in that way. But when I was going through just like the the bluest of blues, and this is like right after um, my breakup, um, I really just wanted. I I I I thought I was going to have a nervous breakdown. I was like, oh fuck, like I am not going to come out of this alive. I don't think. And I did ketamine with a a therapist and a doctor, and the effects were immediate. Wait, from doing it once? Once, and I've been on antidepressants. So you don't you don't microdose? Not I don't microdose. I it's almost as if I just don't have that like the quickening of my heart when I'm like anxious. Like I'm super anxious. I'm always sweating. I just don't have that currently. Like I'm able to just kind of exist, not necessarily like overjoyed, but I'm able to just get through my days without fearing um, every tiny thing that happens. From doing ketamine that one time? One time. I can't like- Did you have like an epiphany that you remember that like- No, I had the worst ketamine journey, I think of all ketamine journeys. I thought I was physically dying. 
Like it was. So now you're so like, grim. I'm just glad I'm alive. I think so. It was so <laughs> scary. He's like, and I overdosed. Uh, <laughs> I might have. It was so scary and so grim and so dark. I cried for 90 minutes. I couldn't breathe. It was. I was a therapist salivant. was there with yeah, you. and a doctor as well, checking your heart rate and all of that stuff. Wow. And it's been like four, like three months now, and I am just able. And I was not able previous to that. I mean, I was like, oh, I think I'm going to probably kill myself. And n now I'm like, holy shit, it works. What did you tell them? You said, I have like unbelievable depression. Yeah, I am so depressed. I am at my wits end. I think I am starting to, I never want to say that I'm like, oh, I have suicidal ideation or anything like that because they'll like lock you, <laughs> lock you up for that. But I was like, I don't know how to get through my days anymore. Like I'm constantly Never tried crying. Weed? I used to smoke a lot okay. and it worsened my anxiety a little bit. Um, but I cannot believe how well it's working. I just am able. Can you, is there any way to articulate like what it changed for you? Because I know like for me when I have gotten like super high off weed or like, you know, dabbled in psychedelics, like I... It like like you see so many things more clearly and like you feel like did you have any can you, did you I have I that? didn't I wasn't even nothing I had no great visual like awakening or anything like that I'm you telling just got you. sad it, you, like all the sadness like came out at once I think it felt like a purging for me maybe and it was so difficult and I was so uncomfortable and I couldn't move my body and it, it, they talk about this like afterglow afterwards and you kind of feel a little bit like high still. Um, but it's, for, for example, um, just I, I past five hours of a flight alone, I can't take. Like I'm so afraid to travel alone. But now I'm like, oh, I can do anything. I'm not afraid of anything. I can drive anywhere. Oh, I that's can. why Bobby was invited on your the <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Had I taken ketamine before that, he would have not have been invited. But so no, now you can handle it. I can, I can handle it. That's amazing. What were you afraid of taking a flight by yourself? Everything, because I get panic attacks. I'm like, what if I get a panic attack on a twenty, a fifteen hour flight? You know, um, what if, and then no one can help me, and I think I'm because I, 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 you know, right. I'm My nuts. dad would never go on a flight more than two hours. So if he came to LA from Chicago, he would take a he would stop at a layover yeah. to use the toilet. <laughs> He's like, I'm not using a toilet on an airplane. <laughs> His whole life was like a lot about where he could toilet. go use the toilet. <laughs> that's relatable. <laughs> well, that's amazing that that made you better. Yeah. I mean, who knows for how much longer I feel like the effects are waning a little bit because I'm kind of starting to get like a little bit sad, but I'm like, oh, I could just re-up. Would you, know, you do throw me in a K-hole? With me? Yeah, I would. You know, would. it's never worked for me. Really? I think I need like a very large dose. Huh. But have you taken them a lot at some I've point? I've tried it probably like five or six times. Do you, you love never, it? It's no, it's never like worked. What? Oh, That's what? weird. I swear to God, I've tried psychedelics and it has not worked. That's so funny because I knew a girl who did not feel anything from ayahuasca. No. I swear to God. <laughs> and everyone around her was just so fucked up. And she was like, nope, I, nothing. No revelations, nothing, nothing. That's weird. So that might be the equiv equivalent of you and mushrooms. Oh, gosh. Did cannabis help you write your book? I mean, I definitely will use weed sometimes to like try to expand my mind, like especially when I'm thinking about ideas like parenting at the end of the world or like <laughs> fear and love and how they're connected and like, you know, just kind of like thinking about these concepts that you feel but you don't quite know how to express. So, you know, I, I find for me like writing sometimes if I'm if I'm ever stuck, that can that can help. Yeah. That's what I've noticed too. Like I feel so much more expressive and creative and like in touch with myself from like trying cannabis. Yeah. <laughs> trying to be formal it's about it. It's a match. <laughs> well, that's another thing. It's like it has to agree with your personality, you know, because it's like if you're already super chill like her, weed <laughs> might make her turn her into an idiot. <laughs> Because she's just like so calm and so chill. Whereas like <laughs> I used to be like way more like thirsty. Yeah. Just oh, I'm so thirsty. Yes. That's a really good word for me. <laughs> but weed can like 
chill that out a little yes. bit, I think. Yeah. So can meditation. So can a lot of things, I think. But I remember like my first comedy teachers or like people who I would take, take like when I moved to LA, I took like, I, I, I went to an audition and there was comedians there. And I was like, whoa, these people are way cooler than the actors. Like, I want to be a comedian. Like, who are these people? It's, they all seem so funny. So then I took like improv, like one person show class, stand up comedy class, like groundlings, uh, Second City, any like I took every single class, like unless if it wasn't in Long Beach, I would take it like I took <laughs> sketch writing, like uh, sitcom writing. I mean, I was just always in a class. But I remember I saw one of the teachers like three years later and he was like, whoa, you've changed so much, you know, because I think I was just like I was just like anything, anything, anything like because I just didn't know. And you know, when you don't have parents or anyone guiding you or mentors, you kind of are just like flying blind. You have you know? to like lap it all up to figure yeah, out who you are. You don't are. know what you're doing, you know? So. Do you remember who those comedians were at the audition who you thought were cool? No, but I do remember like, you know, like actors, you come back from an audition and they're, they're like in the waiting room, like someone will come out and they're like, <laughs> I remember this girl was like, I got adjustments. <laughs> like the person <laughs> gave her like like the casting director gave her adjustments and <laughs> so she was bragging and trying to psych out the other actors and like the comedians were just like I mean they're all fucked up too but at least they're funny right you know and I was just Self-aware, like yeah. and I knew that I was funny because people would laugh but I didn't really know how to harness that or what to do so that's why I was like just really trying to figure it out for like it probably took me like three years and like nine thousand dollars in classes <laughs> to like try to i remember i took a groundlings class and after the first the first um class was done you had an interview and the teacher was like good job we're gonna invite you to repeat and that's how they would say it, like you're invited <laughs> to repeat the class again so like it was like a lot of that stuff like trying to find my fit you know and then i think like with stand-up I just kind of got lucky and like it just worked the first time I tried it and I was like this is amazing so then it was then I just kept doing that I think I was such a ball of anxiety when I started because I I feel like w- when I was in an audition room I would literally make the worst impression possible on everyone I would be like I'd walk in and I'd, if I saw like a group of women sitting there I'd be like how long has everyone been waiting? What? How behind are they? Like, I was just like, like I was walking to a doctor's office. I was such a, I was like, what? I can't do this. Like sometimes I would leave. Like I was just, I thought I was too busy even though I had nothing else to do. I just couldn't like sit the pain, handle the pain of like having to wait. It right. like made me so offended or something. I think being a comedian, you're always going to say stupid shit. I just always say stuff I regret. <laughs> I can't stop. I just, it just happens all the time. I'm just always feeling like, why did I say that? Yeah, but that is actually such a good thing because that's like how you achieve like the flow state or that's like how you, it's like for every 100 stupid things I say, three of them will be like (laughs) something important to someone. That's good, right? It could be. Great stats. (laughs) (laughs) The 3% (laughs) success rate. Yeah. Well, Natasha, thank you so much for being here today with us. I feel like we've learned a lot. Okay, well, thank you guys um, when, so much. When does the book come out? Um, my book, The World Deserves My Children, comes out November 15th, but it is available for pre-sale now. And um, the cover is so good. Thank you. This is my kitchen. That's my yeah. child. <laughs> Try to not show her face so she doesn't Wait, hate me. That's one thing I wanted to ask about actually okay um, parents who make um pages for their children like instagram pages i mean i'm just too paranoid you know do you think that at some point that will have some implications for the i mean uh, i i'm assuming i don't know i mean i've seen first of all I remember being with a friend and her 10 year old was with us and people at the party were like, oh, I recognize you from Instagram to the 10 year old. (laughs) So like that's something that I was like, oh, clocked that. I don't want that to happen. And then I also heard of a girl like suing her parents for like putting images of her out. And then my daughter's always saying these funny things. So I tell people and she'll hear me and she's like, mom don't you say everything that I say. Don't tell people things I say. Mm -hmm. And then I'm thinking like, wait, my whole act is about her. So now (laughs) here's my new plan. What do you guys think of this? Just not going to record a special. 
So she'll never know. <laughs> no, do it. No, what then I'll that? just like travel. If you want to see me, come to one of my dates. I'm doing a book tour and I'll be talking about everything. But I'm thinking like maybe I won't put it in anything concrete so she can never watch it when she's 12. Or she can't sue me. you. Or sue me or whatever. <laughs> I'm going to do a bootleg filming of it. <laughs> Sell it to her. The world deserves my comedy. You don't think people can just come see me? <laughs> um, um, well, I really am excited for you guys to switch out those screensavers into babies. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. Wait, where do we um, get information about seeing you on tour? Uh, you can go to my Instagram and I'll have all my tour dates listed. And uh, pre-sale, you can get the book now. Or you can, you know, get the pre-sale and then you get it. But they all count towards, uh, you know, making it a New York Times bestseller. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to do that. Well, thank you, girls. Thank you, thank you so you, much, Natasha. Natasha. Dream come true. <laughs> See you guys next week.